Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to perform a year to date or a running totals calculation. I'm actually going to show you three different methods. First method uses the sum function. The second method uses the scan function, which is available in Excel 365. And the third solution you'll be able to use in an Excel table. So let's go to the first solution using the sum function. So using the sum function, we initially want to create a formula that just references the first sales value. But then as we copy the formula down, the range it needs to refer to needs to grow. So in this cell, we would need to add up these two cells. And then when I get down here, it would need to add up these three cells and so on and so forth as we copy the formula down. Now, the way we're going to achieve that with the sum function is to initially just reference the first sales value, then put a colon in, and you'll see that it then returns a range reference that includes that one cell, B2 colon B2. Now, the B2 to the right of the colon needs to change to B3, B4, B5 as we copy the formula down, but the B2 to the left of the colon needs to stay the same. Now, the way we lock it or make it stay the same is to use a dollar. We place that dollar before the two so that as we copy the formula down, this two stays the same. So you'll see what I mean. If I press enter and then copy this down, and let's go down to this formula, I'm still referencing B2, but to the right of the colon, I'm referencing B5. So it's adding up four cells. If I go down here, again to the left of the colon, I'm still referencing B2, but to the right of it, I'm now referencing B10. So I'm adding up nine values. Now these green triangles, that's just gonna tell you you've got formulas emitting adjacent cells. We can get rid of those green triangles by selecting the cells, going up to the warning button and ignoring the error. Now, a really quick way of using this formula, if I just delete what we've currently got there, is to select all the sales values, then go down to this little button, Quick Analysis, then go to Totals, ignore this running total here, but select this running total here, and it will perform exactly the same calculations as before, exactly the same formula, but Excel writes it for you. You still have to get rid of these green triangles, but then you're good to go. So that's the first solution, scan. Now, the reason you'd use scan is that you want to create a single cell formula that spills its results into surrounding cells. And that means you won't have to copy the formula. Equals scan. Now, the first argument is initial value. The initial value is going to be zero in our scenario. We haven't got any previous sales values that we want to add the first sales value to, comma. And array is the range of sales values that you're performing the year-to-date calculation on. So that's these cells here, comma. Now in the function argument, you need to use the lambda function. Now with the lambda function, I can create a named reference to both the initial value and the array. So I'll call the initial value A, comma, and the array I'll call sales. So now I've given both the initial value and the array a name, I can perform the calculation. And the calculation would be sum A plus sales. So then I need to close the bracket for lambda and then for scan. Now, if I press enter, you can see that one formula delivers all of the results that I need across the year. Now let's try and understand how scan works. First of all, let's take A. So A, we initially set to the value of zero, but as the scan formula is spilled down into surrounding cells, a takes on a new value. So for example, once the formula gets down to here, the value for March, A has become the sum of the previous two sales values, 1,730, 1,496. When I get down here to the May year-to-date calculation, 
a has become the sum of the previous four values, January through to April. So A is then added to the sales value. Now we know sales refers to this array here, but what SCAN does is perform a calculation on each individual value within that array. So we're adding A to each individual month value as the formula is copied down. So to make sense of that, when we get to here, March, a equals the previous two values added to the current value for this row, which would be the March value, which gives us this result here, and so on and so forth down the column. So let's talk about how to create a year-to-date calculation in a table. So I'm going to put this data in a table. I'll click anywhere within it, and I'll go to Insert Table, and I'll click on OK over here. So let's try the sum solution. So I'd say sum B2 colon B2, close the bracket, and I'm going to lock that first B2 reference. If I then copy this down, and I can use this little button here to overwrite all cells, you can see that it does work. But if I add another record at the bottom of the table, so let's say January next year, Can you see what it does to the now penultimate record in our table? If I look at this calculation, it's actually extended the range down to B14, whereas it should be down to B13. So that doesn't seem to work. So we're going to need to write a different formula. Now we can use sum, but the way around this is to use the index function. Now the first argument in index is array. So array will be the range of sales values that you're doing the year-to-date calculation on. Now initially I want to refer to the first row in that column. And I can do that by specifying one as my row number. So I'll close the bracket for index, and then I'm going to put a colon in, and I'm going to refer to the first sales value. So what we're trying to do here is to create a range reference, which is why I've got a colon there. On the left side of the colon, I always want to refer to the first value in the sales column. And on the right side of the colon, we always need to refer to the sales value in the current row. And the way Excel does that is with this at symbol. So this basically means refer to the sales value in the row that this formula is in. So if I close the bracket there and press enter and then copy this formula down, you can see that it works. But if I add January at the bottom, it hasn't affected the previous result. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next video.